Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about tables and graphs. So let's just get right into it. So first off, where do we see tables and graphs? Well, you see them all the time on the news, businesses, in politics, pretty much just everywhere. All right, they range from really simple graphs, like for example, in politics, you might see something that has a breakdown of so many Republicans, so many Democrats, right? So just a simple pie chart with Republicans and Democrats, that's a graph, right? Some of them are much more complex, like for example, in scientific studies, They often report their results in a number of different graphs, but those can look a lot more complex. There's a lot more going on with them. So today the idea is just going to be getting the basics down for the different types of graphs, when to use the different ones, and just how to set them up. Alright, so let's start off just talking about frequency tables before we actually go into graphs. So a frequency table, a basic one just has two different columns. The first column lists all of the categories and the second column lists the frequency. All right, so the categories are what your data actually are. So for example, if we're talking about flavors of pie that you like, right, then the first column categories would have things like apple, cherry, you know, peach, pumpkin, whatever you like. The second column, the frequency, says how many people like that particular pie. Alright, so categories just literally what are we even talking about and frequency is how many people are in that category so for example there's 24 students in algebra class and here are all of their grades all right so if we set up just a basic frequency table then the first column would just be The grade. So here we have all the grades A through F. So A, B, C, D, F. Second column is frequency. So for frequency, we just look at how many A's are there. Well, there's three. So we just put three. All right, then how many B's are there? Well, there's eight. So we put eight. Same thing for C's. There's eight. There are three D's. And there are two F's. All right, so it's just counting up how many are in each category. Now, at the bottom, we're going to put one more thing. We're going to put total. So for total, we literally just add all the frequencies up. And in this case, we already knew there were 24 students. So we already know that total is going to be 24. All right, now, there is one more column that we are going to be talking about. All right, that last column that we're going to talk about is going to be relative frequency. All right, relative frequency 
is just giving the frequency as a percentage of the total. All right. So all we have to do for it is take the frequency. So for example, in the first one, our frequency was three. We're going to divide that by the total. Our total was 24. All right. So if we turn that into a percentage, then if we round it up to the nearest percent, it would be 13 percent. That's the relative frequency. A is our 13 percent of the total. Then we can do the same thing for the rest of them. So for B, B8 over 24 still because the total doesn't change. And so that'd be 33 percent rounded. For C's, same exact thing. 33 percent. For D's, it's 3 over 24 again. So 13 percent. And for F's, it'd be 2 out of 24. So 8 percent. All right, now one thing to note about the relative frequency is if you add all of those up, the total should now be 100 percent. All right, because it encapsulates everything in this table, so it should always add up to 100 percent. All right, let's take a look at another example. So for example two, it says make a bend frequency table for the following 25 scores on an English final. All right, now this time it says bend. The reason it says that is because there's no categories this time. There's no A, B, C, D, F that we can just count up. So we have to kind of make our own categories. All right. And in this case, sure, we know that since they are scores, we can just kind of put them into letter grades, essentially, or at least those grade ranges. But what if they were something else that can't be put into easy you know, letters like that? This is where bin comes in, because it's just going to be a range of numbers that we're going to count up. All right, so for this example, we're going to be making 10 point bins. All right, so 10 point bins just means that each of our little grade ranges is going to have 10 points worth of grades in it. So I'm going to have two columns. I'm going to have score. and I'm going to have the frequency. All right, so if we want 10 points, then our first range could be 90 to 99. All right, because by the way, 99, that's our highest, and 38 is our lowest. So we need to make sure that we go as high as 99 and as low as 38, otherwise some of those scores are going to be left out, right? All right, so that's our first bin. Next up, it would be 80 to 89. Then 70 to 79. And you get the idea. And don't forget, we are going to want a total down here. Okay, so the idea is that now instead of just counting alright there's 199 there's one person who got a 98 and saying that everybody just had 
one of those. Every score just had one person make that. Instead, we're just going to count all of the scores that are within those certain ranges. All right. So let's go ahead and start going through it. So for 90 to 99, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. So the frequency is 4. For 80 to 89, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Frequency is 9. 70 to 79, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 60 to 69, 1, 2, 3, 4, 50 to 59, got 1, 2, 40 to 49, we have none, so we're just going to go ahead and put 0, and 30 to 39, we got our last one, so 1. Now notice all of my values have red dots, so I made sure that I counted every single one of those in this table. And if we add that up, it is going to equal 25. Okay, just a couple more things about these frequency tables before we move on um, in the next video to talk about the actual graphs. All right. So we're going to talk about this more in the next video, but for now, I just want you to write that this is qualitative. Essentially, that means that we were working with data that doesn't have numbers. All right. The bend frequency table that's for quantitative which essentially just means that we're working with data that is numbers All right, so that's when to use the different ones you make the normal frequency table like in example one if there's no numbers involved the bend frequency table like in example two if there are numbers involved All right. also Whenever we talk about these different bins, this time I just said 10 point bins, right? But that's not the only way that we can decide on how many bins there are going to be. Instead, you can actually just choose from the beginning how many bins you actually want, which we also call these classes. And just as an example of this, if we wanted, I don't know, for example, nine classes, as in if we wanted nine different bins of numbers, then to figure out what your ranges should actually be, here's what you need to do. You take the highest number, subtract the lowest number, and then once you get that, you divide it by the number of classes. And we're always going to round this up. All right, so for example, in our case, if we actually wanted nine of these bins, we would take our highest number, which was 99, subtract our lowest number, which was 38, and divide by the number of classes we want, which is 9. If you plug this into your calculator, you're going to get about 6.77, but we said that we round it up, so we round it up to 7. So that means each of our bins 
would actually have seven points in them. All right, so instead of 90 to 99, it would be 93 to 99. All right, and then seven points under that, seven points under that. Just each of these ranges would only have seven points instead of the 10 that we gave them here. All right, so that's it for this first video. That's just the tables portion of it. In the next video, we're gonna go over the graphs. So I will see you in that video.